What is up everybody, Gary Simon here. Today's just a super quick video. That's why you don't have the snazzy intro, the full intro of myself like usual. But this is gonna be a important video though, a quick and important video if you're a UI designer, because this is going to help a lot of you, especially those of you who are new to UI design. And this falls into the realm of color, all right? I'm gonna show you a very quick tip that's going to make your life many of your lives so much easier. So let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably wanna be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022, and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, so let's say for instance, we have uh, a background. This could be any background. It could be, you know, like a dark background, a light background, any color, whatever, it doesn't matter. And um, let's say we want to start developing a color scheme of some sort. And uh, we're going to assume for now, it's just going to be a monochromatic color scheme, which means we're working within the same color. We're just gonna create different shades. So the newbie designer might do something like this. So they're gonna, we're gonna get a shape here. This is just a, a rectangle or a square. And we're going to grab the current color right here. Now, honestly, in a, a true newbie designer, what they would probably do instead of grabbing the same background color, they would probably just grab this color, this, this gray, this light gray, and then try to match it up over here based on the background and try to choose something. And I'm so skilled, I got I got pretty close. Uh, but a newbie designer, you know, they might push something over here and they they, they might, uh, if they're working in hex, they'll probably, you know, create something like this. It's like, oh my God, my eyes. It's like that's, that color contrast is so terrible. But a step up from that is you wanna, when you're working, you're trying to create shades, you're gonna take, you know, their background color, use the eyedropper tool and get and make your shape, your your rectangle, whatever it is, the same color, all right? Now, what a that newbie designer will do is they'll take, if we zoom up here, perhaps they're working in hex right here, they'll physically take this little uh, handle and they'll drag it around to try to create a shade inside the same hue or so. And that's not ideal. I, I do it sometimes, but I have, a, I have a good eye. I've been doing this for a very long time. And I can generally create something that looks pretty good. Like, you know, if I want to go a lighter, you know, this actually works very well. Uh, if I want to go darker, this works quite well. But if you don't have an eye for it yet, you know, people might do something like this. They might by accident push it over and they might create something horrible like this where you can barely see it. There's too much gray introduced into it and tone. Um, and, and that's what you don't want to do. That's what you want to avoid, especially if you're a beginner. What you want to do, let's make this the same color again, is you want to switch to HSL over here. And what that does is we see we have three values. We have the hue. Now the hue right here is in relation to this little slider. It simply means different colors. So when you adjust this value with your keyboard up and down arrow key, you'll see this little uh, circle right here move along and it changes the color. We don't wanna do that right now. Um, then we have saturation, all right? So this is the color saturation here in this value. Right here it happens to be 54. So when you move that, and I'll move it real quick, you'll see it moves to the right and to the left. And simply it means, are we gonna add a full color all the way over here to the right? Or are we gonna introduce gray over here? You can see it just gets a lot grayer. And over here, of course, that's 100% gray. Um, we don't wanna do that either. What we wanna do is we wanna take the third value, which is the lightness value. Right now it happens to be 38. When you adjust this on your keyboard arrow keys, this little circle will either go up or down. So we're introducing lightness or darkness to the color itself in the same hue and the same saturation. 
And this is what you want to do if, when you're trying to create a monochromatic color scheme working within the same color. So watch what happens. We're just going to move this up. All right, that's great. So if you want to have a low contrast card background, this right here would be like a perfect color um, or a perfect choice rather. And then maybe you want to have like a header to it. So we'll duplicate this and maybe this one's going to be darker than the background in which it's sitting. So what do we do? We just take this value right here, the third value, the lightness value, and we drag it down. I'm just hitting it on my keyboard arrow keys, the down arrow key, and we can create a nice color like that. And this works well. All three of these colors right here, we really zoom up, all contrast well with, you, with each other in their low contrast. And of course, we can take it a step further. Maybe we'll duplicate this. Maybe there's some type of progress bar. If you, somebody clicks a button or something at the top, and maybe this one will be I'm really light. So we'll take the lightness, we'll push that up. There we go. And you know what? You can also adjust the saturation value, the middle value. Maybe you want it to have, you know, you really want that color to stick out even more. And now look at all four of these. These all work quite well, all of them together. And it's just a tapping of, of the up and down key, uh, up and down uh, key keys on your keyboard. Sorry, I can't talk. Uh, and you can create a really nice, um, consistent aesthetic working within the same exact hue, within the same exact saturation uh, for at least these two values. Um, and if you want to introduce, for, in for instance, uh, in an analogous color or a third color, very simple. Maybe we'll change this value up here. So what we can do is we can just this HSL slider, the first value, which is 219, or we can go ahead and manually just drag left and right this little slider right here. And an analogous color scheme, which is something I've covered on this video before, right here, this is our hue. So an analogous color would be either directly to the left of it or to the right of it over here. They're, they're colors that are next to each other in the color spectrum. So maybe we'll push this over here. So now we have more of like a turquoise teal color. That works excellent in this context. Now let's experiment. Let's push it to the other side. Go to this way. All right, so now we have an issue. So this is where it helps to develop an eye for your design. We don't have good contrast between this color and this new color right there, if I can draw <laughs> a little mouse version of an arrow. So if that happens, okay, you have some options. You know, you can go ahead and take your lightness and push it up. All right. So actually, it almost changes the color entirely uh, into more of like a, a light purple or pinkish sort of color. So you have a lot of options when you're working within HSL. And of course, I advise you to all to experiment with the other color uh, functions and modes. Uh, for instance, uh, if we come over here, you can see there's not just HSL, there's RGB, of course, there's hue saturation, B for blackness, I believe. I haven't personally messed with that one very much, but if we take that B version, the third one, and it's just gonna introduce black, essentially, to it. So a lot of these do some things that are very similar. HSL works excellent for developing these color schemes.